Hey, welcome back everyone to another episode here in Greg Tech New Horizons. And uh, today I want to keep it nice and simple, we're going to expand our bees. I really would like to get the bees fully self-sufficient and we'll look at adding some new bees to our, uh, to our hives. Uh, there's quite a lot here which we have to pick up still, which we can get on passive. And you guys know how much I rate passive item production, and fluids for that matter. It served us very well in Divine Journey 2, and I think it's going to serve us very well here long term. So in the last episode we spent some time with the Witchery mod in order to brew up some shifting season potions and we built this area here dedicated for Witchery. We've got our altar set up with the help of Metis, who is still here, fully healed up. He did take some damage since I had him originally not in the chair and he decided to run off the railing here and give himself fall damage so he's back to full HP. <laughs> Ain't that right? Yeah. You know what, speaking of our companions, I did also upgrade the space that Diddy lives in. So he, he now has his own bedroom in the hives, his own living quarters. <laughs> He's very fascinated with that painting over there, especially that spider. You're perfectly happy in there, right? Right, Diddy? Huh? Anyway, so at this point we're most of the way through Witchery. Well, at least the important parts of Witchery. There's a lot of quests here which are irrelevant or kind of redundant. Um, yeah, this quest page is... Definitely not the strongest in the game. <laughs> the quest book, by the way, in GTNH, I think deserves a lot more a lot more praise than it gets. The quest book is actually very well put together for the most part. The Witchery page could use some work, to be honest. But uh, yeah, we managed to pick up a few quests last episode. And you know what? Just in general, I think that GTNH devs deserve a lot more credit for the work they do on this pack. So I know there's a lot of you, but thank you for all your contributions and your hard work putting together. New Horizons, it's a ever grown experience. Looking forward to the new updates as well. There is tons of exciting new stuff coming up, which I'll show here in the episodes um, as the updates release. But yeah, just in general, thank you to the devs. Without those guys, I wouldn't have had uh, 2,500 hours worth of GTNH. <laughs> Even just saying that out loud is kind of a yikes. Anyways, we're gonna craft our next shifting season potion, this time for the Oasis biome. Gunpowder and a glass bottle. Oh, we can't forget about our witch's gear as well. Grab some of that expertise. Aha, we got our splash brew of shifting seasons, which reminds me we can update our objective board here. We did manage to fully complete this. Reload. We did manage to fully complete this last episode, so let's update it for today. We want self-sufficient bees, and I also want to target another bee that I saw in the quest book. Actually, I'm not sure they're in the quest book, but I want to pick up the Osmium Bee, the Iridium Bee, the Platinum Bee, and the Refined Bee. Yeah, we'll start with the Refined Bee, I think, since that's uh, going to help us make the bees fully self-sufficient. So Osmium and Iridium. And this, these bees will eventually supplement our Platinum line. Which, by the way, is broken again. I'm always reminded I need to move this thing. I think next episode. Yeah, episode 61. No, 62, this is 61. Yeah, episode 62, we're gonna move the platinum line. So now that most of the bottlenecks are fixed in making more alvearies, I did go ahead and craft some more and set more up here in the hives, as well as putting some stats on some bees we already had. The first one being the Certus Bee. To be honest, I wasn't really sure where to start. Um, eventually we're gonna have pretty much all the bees on passive, but it was more or less just picked at random. <laughs> I'm just chipping away at this slowly. Um, so yeah, I put this, the perfect stats on the Certus Bee and gave it its own alveary. The Certus Bee asks for normal normal in order to give us the special Certus Comb. So again, I crafted another Plains Biome Shifting Season potion and shifted the, shifted the seasons of its alveary. So we now have the Certus Bee here maxed out at 15.790 production, making us both the Stone Combs and Certus Combs. Certus Combs are going to be specially processed in Hydrochloric Acid. And we don't have the LCR set up just yet down here. We only have a centrifuge, which we should go ahead and add the stone combs into. So stone combs is actually relatively useful for us in that it can give us a bunch of different stuff here. Stone dust, black granite, red granite, basalt dust, marble, red rock dust, and beeswax. They are percentage chances that's only 50% pair, 70% uh, for stone dust. And a lot of this stuff we make from crops already, but it's it's useful to supplement our uh, item generation and have a diverse income stream of items. But another one of the bees I added was the clay bee. 
I went ahead and put the perfect stats on the clay bee and gave it the alveary that the saffron bee used to be in. So the clay bee is now producing us passive clay as well as mud balls, which we can extract into clay, although we don't have an extractor set up for this yet. So again, more processing, which needs to be set up here in the hives. Another bee, which we did have, but it wasn't jubilant, was the appetite bee. So I went ahead and crafted another shifting season potion. And this time we got this shifted to a canyon biome, which is uh, preferable for the appetite bee. It gives us warm normal. Again, this is one that we had before, but now that it's jubilant, it should be producing us the appetite comb. Uh, we picked this up for the CD comb in order to fluid extract the nut dew into seed oil, which we use in very large quantities to craft the alveary blocks. But again, the appetite comb has to be sent through a large chemical reactor with hydrochloric acid, and obviously we don't have that yet, so we're just letting it build up in the E system. It's pretty awesome to see this thing fill up, actually. Uh, yeah, like 550 clay, 4000 industrial TNT, the appetite combs, the certus combs, so many different things. Oh, I love passive everything. It's a motto I live by. <laughs> passive everything. And uh, speaking of passive everything, we also want to passive diamonds, since diamonds is something that we use to expand our AE system. Um, so we need a lot of diamonds. And for this one though, I did have some trouble getting the right season for this, the, the right biome for this because the diamond princess calls for, yeah, the diamond princess calls for hot normal. And in the jungle, at least at the Y level that we're at, we are in normal damp. And I actually went through a bunch of different shift in season potions, trying to find the right biome. So after wasting a few potions, I did decide to add a high grow regulator, which will decrease the humidity. Right now, this is a volcano biome. So the bee is jubilant here at hot normal, although I think with the new splash potion that we crafted at the beginning of the episode, which is for Oasis, that should make it jubilant without the need for the high grow regulator. So we're in volcano now. Now we're in Oasis. And this should be, yeah, normal damp because we have the high grow regulator. Because we were taking the humidity down, all we needed actually was water, so it's really not expensive for us at all. It's just more simple and more TPS efficient if we don't have to use this, I guess. And it's it's a bit cleaner overall, so I would like to get it so, to where we don't need to rely on the hydro regulators. So switching this out with alveary blocks, I'm hoping it's going to stay hot normal. Normal damp. You know, I really did expect that to work, but I guess we're going to go back to one of the ones I had before, the Lush Desert. So I've crafted another potion here. We're going to go from Oasis back to Lush Desert. That takes us into Warm Normal. And what we're going to do actually is use a Alveary Heater, which should increase the temperature and just use power to do so. And it's going to take power from the transmission. And this should take us up to Hot Normal. Yes, perfect. And that reduces the need for the hydro regulators and having to deal with fluids and extra pipes underneath. So it is a bit of extra power cost, but with the fully self-sufficient bees that I hope to get this episode, that shouldn't really be much of an issue. Yeah, and also to save on some power, I have the items and the, the energy coming from this dimensional transceiver. So they're all connected together. Um, but we want to have at least one dimensional transceiver per biome. And every biome is going to be its own grass patch. Or yeah, every grass patch is going to be its own biome. It's a work in progress, okay? <laughs> it's a work in progress. But with any luck, by the end of this episode, we should see many, many, many alvearies in here. And I did set the filter here, right? No, I didn't set the filter. This diamond bee also gives us the stone combs, which is pretty nice. Yeah, diamond and stone combs will also just back up in the AE system. So uh, yeah, what you're about to see here over the next couple of minutes is a couple of days IRL. <laughs> um, but I wanted to go all the way with the bees here. So let's just get rolling, shall we? So the first task was to tackle the refined bee. After getting a pure princess, I combined an ancient with a secluded to get a primeval bee. With all these new species, I made sure to duplicate the bee and keep backup stock. So you can safely assume that that occurs through every new addition to our colony. After that, the primeval was combined with ocean, and the resultant oily bee mutated with industrious for the distilled princess.
More generations in the apiary and then oily plus distilled was mutated for a refined bee. This one wants normal normal, so we craft up the potion for plains biome, build an alviary and add another bee to our hive's colony. This bee gives us petroleum and oily combs, but we'll circle back to those later on. For now, let's keep going with the mutations and adding new species. Alright, so with Platinum acquired, it was time to move to the Osmium and Iridium bees. But before that we had to get a Heroic bee, which needs a forest biome to mutate. So this time, rather than move the Alviary, I made use of our Shifting Season potions and mixed a Valiant Princess with a Steadfast drone. I bought the drone from the questbook, as these are normally dungeon loot bees, however we haven't come across any so far in this world. But after the acquisition of Heroic, it was a fairly straightforward path to Iridium, following the requirements to breed the bees and keeping backup stock along the way. Excellent, so that's three of four bees on our objective board, and we're left with Osmium. This one, like many others, needs the block underneath the alveary to mutate the bee. And fortunately for us, we do have a small amount of Osmium from our plat line, but we lack the ability to smelt the dust. Osmium dust has to be cooked inside an LUV blast furnace, so I had to add a second energy hatch to overclock one of our EBFs. In general, it's not recommended to share energy hatches on wall-shared EBFs. So to manage this task, I disabled one of our blast furnaces. I slotted in another IV energy hatch to double up the power intake. And this effectively overclocks us to LUV. After hooking up the power, it's now capable of smelting our osmium dust into the first nine osmium ingots. With a block of osmium underneath the alveary, we could mix platinum and tungsten bees together, and finally we had our osmium bee. Osmium. <laughs> so we have all the bees we wanted at first, but why stop there? So after the construction of many more alvearies to house our new platinum, osmium and iridium bees, among others, I then went back to more bee mutations. During the time I was breeding new bees, I was also running an experiment to see if the setup for bee power was going to be fully self-sufficient. I'll share the results of the test and the process here shortly, but for now I worked on getting some more bees and unlocking some more quests. It was around this point in time we'd run our supply of liquid honey dry, meaning that we couldn't craft any more alveary casings. But with the amount of time I spent doing bee mutation, and with the quantity of bees we now have making honey for us, it really didn't take too long to replenish our supply, 
and allow us to craft more alviaries to house all of our new bees. After a handful of generations, I was eventually able to work up to the energy bee and the lapitron bees, two bees which will be very useful to have in our population. And we even had to take a trip to the moon to get the lapitron bee as it's one of its breeding requirements. And many, many, many more hours later, I finally picked up some of the magical bees. Some of the bees in this lineage also had some very obscure requirements for mutation, but we got there in the end. And this is probably one of the biggest time cuts in the series to date. Um, honestly, I do have a lot of fun breeding the bees, it's just a lot of the same. Um, but because we still have so many more bees to unlock, we'll do some, some more of it on camera. Um, but for now, let's uh, take a break here and we'll check out the results of this mega grind. That was actually definitely a mega grind. Um, <laughs> oh man, oh my goodness. Okay, so, um, yeah, there's so many things to catch up on here. Where do we even begin? Um, let's, you know what, let's begin with a time check. So you should be seeing the playtime uh, right after I filtered the Diamond Bee, um, which I believe was somewhere in the region of like 1355 or something like that. I like to include these time checks just as a bit of perspective and context as to how much time has actually passed. So we're now on 1376, which is, well, yeah, I've been doing some grinding here. And as you can see, we now have so many more apiaries. Um, by the way, all these bees are perfect stats, and all the apiaries are, or sorry, alviaries are maxed out at 15.790 production. So yeah, it took some time to get all the stats on the bees, build all the alviaries. Considering every casing block takes 60 seconds in the assembler, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it takes a while to craft all this stuff and build up all the resources, but speaking of the build up of resources, check out the terminal right now. Let's filter by number of items. Yeah, look at this, 8,000 industrial TNT now. I mean, 5,000 iridium combs. I'm quite glad this was one of the first ones I, I set up, actually, in the Alviaries. 5,000 iridium, 4,000 stone combs. I did actually take these out of the centrifuge to stop processing all this stuff, because we're gonna end up with a storage problem if we don't uh, send these marble dust and black granite dust, for example, to like storage chests where they can void overflow. I'll fix that later on though. I have a I have a bit of an idea of how we're gonna sort that. Yeah, palladium, certus, appetite, energetic, diamond. Yeah, two thousand diamond. That's so good. Fifteen hundred energy, lapis, magnesium, lapitron, rare earth, redstone, salt, zinc, chromium. Oh, this is so good. Some of you guys who don't play GTNH might not like. Yeah, I think I mentioned this before, but you might not like. Uh, know what any of these resources are actually used for. It might just look like numbers on a screen. <laughs> and that's probably, that probably is the case to be honest. But if you know the the how expensive everything is in GTNH, then you'll know just how great this is. Especially for the short amount of time that some of these have been running. But yeah, since so much time has passed, I wanna take the pace all the way back down. We're gonna slow the tempo of this video. And I wanna just chat about, um, yeah, chat about, reflect a bit on this series as a whole. It's now been, what, 11 episodes since I rebooted GTNH? Yeah, so I feel like I'm really starting to enjoy the process again, unlike when I burned out. Um, I'm gonna just chat about why I burned out. I, I kinda mentioned this back when I returned in, in episode 49. What else do we need here? Maintenance hatch is what I wanted here. I'm gonna encode the recipe for a large chemical reactor since that's what we're about to set up here for the processing of all the combs. Um, and I want to be able to request a full multi-block and have it go to this chest here. But yeah, on burning out, I kind of felt like it was getting to the point where I was just like, okay, we, we're getting this item, then we're crafting this one, and now we have this, and now we have this. Like, too much time was passed in each episode, which I felt actually started to happen here in this episode, if you, if you kind of understand where I'm going with this. Like, it was just like, okay, we've got this bee, and now we've got this bee, <laughs> and now we've got this bee, and like all the challenges basically removed from the episode, um, and I don't want it to feel like that. 
I don't I I don't want the I don't want the series to just be okay. I mean, now we craft this, and now we craft this, and now we craft this, and now we don't have levels again. Why is that? I just picked up the levels from the overworld there. Essentially, what I'm getting at though is there becomes a kind of disconnect between you guys and uh, what we're doing in the world, and you're kind of no longer invested, and therefore I'm no longer invested either. Um, and that is that is a problem because when I'm no longer invested, then the series is over, right? <laughs> um, but that's not going to happen this time. I'm going to get this tier seven rocket. And there's also been uh, some questions on what happens after the tier seven rocket. I've seen some, well, quite rightly, so I haven't really communicated it clearly. To be honest, though, I haven't actually decided uh, if I want to continue GTNH after the rocket, or if we're going to play a different pack, or if I'm maybe not even going to upload anymore. It kind of just depends. I want to be excited about the projects that I'm working on. And this tier 7 rocket has my my whole focus right now. My All of my attention is basically on this rocket. Now, I could actually speedrun for the... Well, it wouldn't be easy to speedrun. But we could, like, speedrun to the rocket. Um, but th is this going to work? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, there's there's nothing really forcing me to play the way the way that I'm playing. Um, but like I said, I'm just going to be playing selfishly and uh, playing in my own playstyle. We could, like, optimize our run here just for the rocket, but I don't really have much interest in doing that, to be perfectly honest. Um, so, yeah, I, I kind of estimate we're going to get there about 2,000 hours played. Uh, maybe, like, five months' time, IRL, to get the rocket. And then after that, like I said, I don't know. I don't know. We might continue GTNH. We might play another pack. I don't really know. I'm kind of leaning towards um, continuing GTNH. I don't know if I'm going to go all the way to Stargate, though, but... Because Stargate is one intimidating looking, uh... <laughs> oh man, it's just, it just seems impossible, Stargate. We will see, we will see, but the rocket is my sole focus for the time being. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to set up four chemical reactors here. I believe we're going to need four. Um, I guess we could share the fluids, but if we check out what we're making here, um, and I have a note here, we need to make some IV energy hatches. So some of the combs which need processed are like the iridium, this needs to be processed inside talic acid, and we do not make talic acid right now. This is a whole process, and talic acid, I believe, is also used in polybenzimidazole. Right, let's check the LCR recipes here. I think it's diphenyl isotalate. I definitely didn't say that right. Is it this that's used? Yeah, here, polybenzimidazole. And this is used in machine casings at UV or ZPM. Yeah, it's the ZPM machine hull, which needs polybenzimidazole. So we want to have a good production of talic acid. Yeah, talic acid is going to go down next to the LCRs, down next to where we process oil. Um, but we're going to set up talic acid next episode. Um, there's a few others here, like the salt comb, for example. No, not the salt comb. Is it zinc? Yeah, zinc comb needs hydrochloric acid. I mentioned this. There's quite a few with hydrochloric acid. Um, but there's also a few with phosphoric acid, I think I've seen. Yeah, phosphoric acid, talic acid, hydrochloric acid, and then finally hydrofluoric acid. Uh, namely the chromium and like endium. Some of the things we don't have yet, but eventually we're going to have to have one with hydrofluoric acid. So yeah, I think we will go for four and we'll put two on top of each other and like stack them side by side. And then potentially also have to add a second centrifuge. I kind of feel like I'm not doing a great job at communication here of what I'm... Uh, the points I'm trying to get across is something I need to work on, to be honest. Um, like, playing and trying to talk at the same time is not one of my strong points. <laughs> I need to, like, think about what I'm going to say first, but... Um, yeah, and all this crafting is actually reminding me that we don't have any molecular assemblers yet. And that's just because it takes an EV assembling machine, which isn't that big of a deal. We can definitely do this, but let's try not to get distracted too much here. We'll, we'll continue with these LCRs, and I'll just batch craft. That should allow us to make or request uh, two or three more of these large chemical reactors. One more machine controller. There we go. 500 steel. That's nothing for us. Maybe we should get the steel bee. Although steel is like, is very easy for us at this point. Yeah, 6,000 steel. Maybe now is a good time to show you how many bees we, we have inside Alviris. Max stats, of course, and max production. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, it's quite a diverse list. We have a, a whole range of different stuff that we're making. And uh, keep in mind, this isn't all the bees that we now have. If we check our drone species chest, we have 97 different species. 
And I think I'm actually missing backup stock for two of them or three of them, I think. It's difficult to narrow it down when when there's just so many, but I think the ones that we're missing is very very early on. So it's easy to get them again if we if we ever need them. Um but yeah, we have a lot of a lot of species here. Um there's a few which were which I picked up, like the magical bees. I mentioned this in the time lapse. Uh, there's a one specific magic bee which we're going to pick up pretty soon whenever we do Thomcraft, and that is the empowering bee, which can um, it will randomly add aspects up to nearby nodes and allow an enormous power to build up. The best chance to breed them is during the full moon. Yeah, so this basically allows us to um, build a mega node from Thomcraft and use it to like recharge wands and the arcane crafting table. So we have the V drone. Um, and all these ones, but we don't have the rejuvenating yet. Uh, which shouldn't be too difficult, actually. We can get an attuned in V. But I think it's these three here which needs nodes nearby as their flower block. So I kind of got stumped at that stage <laughs> and couldn't go any further. So we'll look at that when we do the Thumbcraft episode. Okay, so we have our four large chemical reactors built here. Before we wire this in, let me take you through the experiment that I was running that I also mentioned in the time lapse. Um, so this is our newly rebuilt bee power. This is our fully self-sufficient bees from the refined bees. And you might have spotted on the screenshot I showed, or yeah, on the list of bees that we have, we have not one, not two, but six refined bees. <laughs> six six alviaries full of maxed out refined bees which are all generating us uh just to recap here the oily comb and petroleum comb so oily comb can be centrifuged for oily propolis and then fluid extracted for oil and the petroleum comb is a similar situation petroleum propolis and then fuel or diesel and diesel you can burn in a combustion generator for 480,000 eu it does depend on which tier you go for, uh, as some of these lose efficiency, like at HV it's only 85% fuel efficient. And I did decide to go for HV here, so we have 6 turbo combustion generators feeding their power into a capacitor bank. And then that capacitor bank goes into the dimensional transceiver, and the transceiver powers all the alveries. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see the rate that we're generating combs here. This is so awesome to see. Um, yeah, so the items are ingested here as well. So power is sent through this uh, transceiver and items are received here. The received items go through this conduit into the yellow subnet. And uh, we have another interface here which requests the fuel and the diesel. And that's again buffered in the super tank here. So uh, yeah, the experiment was to see if this number goes up if we're burning less fuel than we're generating. And the good news is that we are. This number is definitely going up here. We're at a million fuel and we just passed three million oil. So oil is not as efficient to burn as fuel. Um, oil you only get 16,000 in the combustion generator and we get even less through the turbo combustion generator. But we're not doing anything else with this oil. So I kind of thought we might as well just burn it. It's like free anyway. We're making it from the bees and the bees power its production. Um, we could actually send this over to our chemistry area. And we could, if we find ourselves short on oil, we could distill it here. Um, here is where we're taking the raw oil from our oil rig, which is in the overworld. Um, but this is raw oil, it's not regular oil. And raw oil gives us a more favourable output of the distillation tower. I think we get a bit more naphtha this way. And we, we're not really short on raw oil. I don't think we're going to be short on raw oil. It's not super difficult to get with our, uh, our pump that we place in the overworld. And that thing lasts forever, so... I don't know, I think we're just going to keep burning it here in the gas turbines, or sorry, the turbo combustion generators. Um, but basically the reason I went with HV, I had MV here to begin with. But um, remember, these dimensional transceivers have a 500 RF a tick upkeep. Um, so that, ad that adds up quite a lot. That is 550 EU, and each one of these generate 512 EU a tick. So it takes a little more than one of these combustion generators to keep one of these transceivers active. And so, unfortunately, I did have to reduce the, um, the amount of transceivers that we have. Um, and in fact, we're only using one for every side of, this, of the hives. And uh, we also have one at the genetics lab. 
which is uh, only active with a signal. So whenever we're mutating bees, I just stand on this pressure plate to activate it. Um, since that can get around the 500 RF attack upkeep cost, because we don't need to keep this active all the time. It's only when we're uh, mutating bees, and I'm going to be standing here anyway, so yeah, I thought we might as well just make use of the redstone functionality of these things. So yeah, back when I originally got the Iridium bee, I had one transceiver per grass patch, like I talked about. So you can see the change in biome here. This was originally, yeah, it's a glacier biome. This was originally the Osmium bee, um, but because of the because of the power cost of the transceivers, we couldn't uh, keep the bees fully self-sufficient with all that with all the transceivers active, right? So yeah, I moved the Osmium bee over to somewhere over here. Is this guy the Osmium bee? Yeah, this is the Osmium bee, and we're missing a sign. Yeah, let's add a sign here, and I've also made sure to signpost all the biomes. So this one is Glacier Biome. And I also encountered a bug as well. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if it's been documented or not, but basically whenever you craft a shifting season potion, if you're far enough into the book, like if you're down here at Swamp, page 200 or so, I don't know the exact cutoff, but like some of these later pages, you have to be on the page after the page that you want. And that combined with the fact that the temperature and the rainfall will change depending on the Y level had me very confused. And I, I wasted so many potions. So yeah, basically if you want ice plains, then you have to be on the Tainted Lands Biome page when you craft the potion and then it will, yeah, make you an ice plains. I think it's a bug. There's something about this book here in the later pages. Um, but if you want to craft like plains, for example, the plains biome page works. So you want to be on page 136. <laughs> but if you want ice planes, you need to be on page 240 rather than 239. It's it's all kinds of all kinds of confusing. <laughs> so on some of these here, I actually have yeah here for example, this is snowy forest, but you have to be on the twilight glacier page in the book to craft the snowy forest biome. And uh, yeah, this one is for the Lapitron bee. Let's add a sign. And I did also try to keep them somewhat organized, so like. For example, here we have a uh, normal damp, which is the regular jungle. This was the one that we started with. And then here's planes. So this one is normal, normal. And then we have another planes here, normal, normal again. I, I think this is another planes for quantum, normal, normal. Um, but I tried to keep the hot biomes over this side and the cold biomes over that side. Um, so this one is gonna be like icy, or sorry, hot added. And then hot normal, I think this is. Yeah, hot normal and then hot warm or warm normal. Yeah, basically I kept the hot biomes over this side. It's not perfectly organized, but it should help us find the alveries if we ever need to locate a specific bee, which I don't think is going to have to be the case, right? Now that we have these set up, we don't need to do anything <laughs> other than make sure we have enough power as we add more alveries. But um, yeah, each alvary costs like only a handful of RF a tick to keep active for the stimulators. So yeah, I hope those explanations made sense, and we've now actually completed our objective board this episode. We have fully self-sufficient bees. It's only the centrifuge and the LCRs, which are externally powered. And I guess the subnet, if you count that as well. Um, but all the bees um, fully power themselves with the refined bee. We now also have the platinum, osmium, and iridium bees. And many refined bees. <laughs> um, so yeah, with that out of the way, let's continue with these LCRs. And yeah, I guess we'll see if we run out of diesel or if we're losing diesel. So we're just over a million fuel and we are just past 3 million oil. All right, so I went ahead and rewired uh, some of the cables under here and so yeah, right now we have 1x vanadium gallium cable supplying us 4 amps of LUV power, right? That's going into a transformer and then it transforms 3 more times. Um, we send 8 amps down to the genetics lab. We send 2 amps to the centrifuge here, which is the EV energy input. And we're going to send another 4 amps this way, which is going to be to our LCRs. Um, so on power, our power is actually going to be our bottleneck. and. I'm not entirely sure how we're going to handle this, to be honest, because I was having a look at, uh, again at some of the recipes and for the osmium comb, 
This starts at IV and it's 190 seconds at IV for four combs. Now I know for a fact we generate more than four combs every 190 seconds. Uh, like yeah, we have 3,600 to process still. Um, so, uh, yeah, and I think Iridium is also the same situation, that's 156 seconds at IV. We can't really afford to bump this up to LUV yet, because we don't have that much power. In fact, how much power are we currently... Oh, our, our super duper EU battery currently has maintenance issues. Oh yeah, let's fix that. I was going to check how much we're averaging output um, when the base is running. Although, to be honest, most of the buffers are filled by now. Like, I've been doing bees for so long that, <laughs> like, all of our chemistry buffers are full, and, uh, yeah, ore processing doesn't run off this power supply, so very little uh, things are actually running. It's basically just the AE system, and, yeah, we do have maintenance issues here. Let's make sure we fix this. It's pretty much just the AE system and, like, the subnet for the hives, and this should be working perfectly now, right? Yes, perfect. Yeah, I mean, basically, it's only about 8,000 DU every 5 seconds, which is really nothing, to be honest. I mean, we generate 120,000 maximum a tick. Uh, so, yeah, we do have a bit of power to spare, but I want to be very frugal when it comes to power usage. But either way, we can't really afford to start running LUV machines, and we can't actually craft the LUV energy hatch either. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I had to overclock the blast furnace uh, to get that osmium smelted. Because the LUV energy hatch needs the assembly line, so... You know what, let's just make this a future 3 problem, and we'll uh, delay this problem until... <laughs> until we actually have talic acid. So for now we'll just set up, um... Well, probably just two of them, because the phosphoric acid is only lithium. Yeah, there's only seven pages of large chemical reaction recipes that use phos phosphoric acid. And only two of them are combs, the electrotene and the lithium comb. And we only generate lithium from the Salt Queen. Um, but it's actually not the main reason why I picked up the Salt Queen. I wanted to get Borax on passive, since that's used in borosilicate glass. And we are going to need a lot of borosilicate glass uh, coming up here soon. So honestly, I think we'll just forget about the Phosphoric Acid and the Talic Acid LCRs right now. And we'll just worry about Hydrofluoric Acid and Hydrochloric Acid. Both of which we should have in our system. Let's just double check our amounts right now. Yeah, 3.6 million hydrofluoric acid and 13 million hydrochloric acid. Yeah, hydrochloric is only a byproduct right now, so we might have to set up a dedicated, a dedicated um, LCR to make hydrochloric acid. Because when I moved it from the overworld, I don't think I made that one. That was the only one I didn't set up. Um, I decided not to set it up since we have so many producing byproducts. And we didn't actually use it anywhere until now, so um, yeah, I might have to set that up again. But for now, I want to consider what we want to run the voltage tier of these two at. So hydrofluoric acid, I believe, starts at HV. Most of the comb recipes, I think, including our platinum, start at HV with hydrofluoric. And then hydrochloric is all LV stuff, at least for the most part. So I think we'll do the LV one at HV. So let's try to get a HV energy hatch for that one. And then we'll do the other one at EV. Uh, we're just missing a motor. That's not too bad. Okay, so hydrochloric acid, we want HV energy hatch here. And because we're sending EV power, we need a transformer. Yeah, for now, we, we can just send the power line up here. And we'll sort out whatever needs to be done on this side uh, in a future episode. That's Future 3's problem. So connect all this together. There we go. So this should have power now. And how's that energy hatch doing? It's still crafting, right? Yeah, it's still crafting. Okay, so we have our fluids in the LCRs. We need to think about items now. So the items are going to come from the yellow subnet. And then I guess we're going to use uh, another stocking input bus, right? I have two crafted here, fortunately. So we'll do one here next to the fluids and one here. And then as for the output, we're actually going to send them into a regular output bus. Um, we're not going to send it back into Applied Energistics. So all of these, as far as I can see, it's going to give us purified versions of ore. And purified, uh, I mean, that has to be either thermally centrifuged, macerated, or sifted in a few cases. I think actually our diamond comb is going to be a good example of this. A, dim a purified diamond we want to sift, but we want to do that at ore processing. 
So, wait, actually, we can share the buses here. We can do that, and it will share between the two machines. Yeah. So instead of sending it back into storage without it being processed, we're actually going to send it into an ender chest, and that will be the same ender chest that ingests items into the ore processing network. Yeah, so when we're running various miners, all of that is ing ingested into this ender chest here, uh, triple light blue, I think it is. And because of the way we have ore processing set up, the purified is going to go to where it needs to be. Um, I think we're going to be able to find it very easily here. The sifting machine, we should see purified diamond he ore here. Um, yeah, so all the purified diamond is going to go into the buffer chest, then into the input buffer, which has some mining pipe. It looks like our miner is actually finished. I'll have to go move that thing again. Yeah, then into the input buffer, then into this subnet here for the sifter, then into the sifting machine. That is the sifter, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's been that long since I've actually messed with this machine. But yeah, into our sifter, then into the ore processing uh, subnet. And it's going to be set up in almost the same way when we move it over across dimensions. At least the functionality of um, yeah being able to handle purified ore. So, on the off chance, do we have another ender chest? Did I end up crafting another one? <gasps> oh, we do! Yeah, I honestly don't remember where we got that ender chest from, but we're going to use it here. And as far as I can tell, everything is going to be purified. So we want it all sent into ore processing. Um, so yeah, the multi-blocks have now formed. We can do our maintenance. Running fine. And do we need a circuit number? I don't I don't believe we do. I think it's just uh, whatever fluid plus the comb plus energy gives us purified. And that should be the case for almost all of them. Um, so yeah, we can now request our like diamond combs, for example, here. And this should turn on. Wait, that was hydrofluoric in the bottom, right? Yeah, that's hydrofluoric. Diamond is hydrochloric, so we want it in the top one. So diamond's here. This machine should turn on, fingers crossed. Oh, do I need to turn it on manually? The yeah, there we go. 30 seconds for 4 at HV. 30 seconds for 4 at HV. That might... Um, unless we just add, like, quadruple input hatches here, and we just do all the fluids in all of them. That could be another option. I, I did make some quadruple in input hatches. And like we could just filter in uh, both of them here. That just means we have to share the stocking input bus. So we might actually do that. Oh yeah, look at how fast our diamonds are disappearing. <laughs> but down to 700 diamonds. But we should see that go up here, right? In the main system. Oh yeah, 1200. I think we were only at 1000. Um, yeah, before we started processing this. But we get the exquisite, we get the flawless, or at least a chance at this when we sift diamonds. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. <laughs> Let's see what else we can filter here. Yeah, you know what? Let's just go down the list here and see what we can we can add to our filters. So we got diamond. Shimmering comb, I think, is the centrifuge. Um, lithium comb is that phosphoric acid one, uh, which I guess we're going to leave for now. Gallium is hydrochloric acid. It's so nice that we're making gallium now, that's so good. For vanadium gallium cable, among other things, uh, like circuits and stuff. But uh, magnesium is also hydrochloric acid. Lapatron combs. Lapatron is extremely important. Lapatron dust, um, yeah, you mix with vibrant alloy for raw lapatron crystal. And then you assemble with 2HV circuits for a lapatron crystal. And then you laser engrave for engraved lapatron chips. And then these you can use for the IV batteries, but you can also use them in fluid processors, fluid circuits, uh, for fluid processors, for the dual interfaces, which are, yeah, we'll need a lot of these to build the platinum line. So it's super useful to have that. And that's also a centrifuge, right? Mellow is, I think, nether quartz, which is also a centrifuge. Rare earth, which we'll talk about another day, but this is something that we have to add to ore processing. Basically, rare earth is going to be used for yttrium, which is going to be used for yttrium barium cuprate. I think once we start getting into LUV, that's going to be relevant. Um, but I'm again, I'm just trying to think ahead <laughs> and try and put as many things on passive as we can. Redstone is also hydrochloric. Uh, salt is the centrifuge. Zinc is hydrochloric. Um, chromium is hydrofluoric. Oops, that's the wrong one. Chromium. Lapis is hydrochloric. Um, energy is similar to Lapitron dust, Energium dust, you can use for energy crystals. 
and you can also mix into more Lapitron dust. Um, yeah, definitely not as essential as the Lapitron B, but I just put it on passive anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that is also, what was that? The centrifuge? So that goes here. Um, osmium is the talic acid, so I guess we're going to leave that. Platinum is hydrofluoric, so we can we can take that along with chromium. Iridium is also talic acid. Stone combs. Hmm, stone combs. Do we want soapstone? No, we don't want soapstone. I think we want a centrifuge, but we're going to have to fix the output for these because we're going to end up with way too many of these dusts. So maybe we'll set up a second centrifuge just for the stone comb. And there's also slag comb which we have a lot of 20,000 slag combs and this also gives us like black granite red granite stone dust so we're gonna have to do something about those for now we're just gonna leave it as combs and uh yeah that should be them all let me set the fillers for for these ones that we have so platinum and chromium in the bottom lcr gallium magnesium redstone zinc lapis right yes perfect <laughs> and then yeah energy salt Mellow, Lapitron, Shimmering, all goes in the centrifuge. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. <laughs> nice, and we can drop all this back. And that should be everything. Eventually, it's all going to get processed, with the exception of Osmium, Iridium, the Stone Combs, and... Yeah, that should be that should be everything, actually. And the Slag. Yeah, so we should start to see things like Lapitron dust show up. Yep, there we are. We should start to see things like Rare Earth. Which we already have quite a bit of, to be fair, but... Yeah, I think we're uh, actually uh, managing this or processing already. But, like, diamonds. How many diamonds are we currently up to? 2,000 diamonds. That's so good. <laughs> that Nice. That is excellent. That is excellent. Oh, yeah. So, these machines are going to be catching up to the backlog for quite some time. That looks pretty fast to me, though. That looks, like, way faster than we were generating combs, but... I don't know. We'll see. Bearing in mind, it takes four... Uh, to get this process started so even if we are generating more combs than this rate i think it's going to be fine so yeah i think that's also a good point to wrap up the episode let me know if you have any other suggestions on bees we can add i'll uh, give you the full list again but yeah I, I think we're off to a flying start here it only took like what 50 hours to get to this point <laughs> um right i think we were on like 1200 and something hours uh when we started this hives project so Mm, yeah, it was pretty time consuming. I kind of wish I started bees earlier in the pack, but um, we're here now. We're getting many things on passive. Yeah, I think I if I was to do it again, I would definitely start bees much earlier. Like probably as soon as we hit HV is probably a good time to start bees, maybe even sooner than that. But yeah, we'll take a break from the bees next episode. I really just wanted to get like lots of these things started because uh, yeah, as I always say, the earlier you can get passive stuff going, the better. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy that we got fully self-sufficient bees as well. It seems to work well with the refined bee. And you know what? I bet Diddy's had a great view of this episode of me just running backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, placing alviaries, mutating bees, <laughs> putting the stats on the bees. But yeah, he's seen everything. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode of New Horizons.